So, again, the big difference between a combination and a permutation, the order doesn't matter. So your combination formula, your combination formula is your permutation formula where you divide out the order because the order, a 3, 2, 1 is the same as a 1, 2, 3, so it's like an identical object. And what did we do with identical objects? We divided them out to count them. Well, a combination is like a permutation with identical objects, and you have to divide out the order. However many things you're talking about is going to be how much you divide by. So for example, if 10 people are in a race, how many ways can they finish first, second, third? That's 10, 9, 8, which is 10, P, 3. If 10 people are in a race and three are going to get chosen to go to the Olympics, doesn't matter if you're first, second, or third, you get to go to the Olympics if you're the top three, then it's just 10, 9, 8, and since there's three spaces, you'd have to divide by 3 factorial, and that'll be 10 choose 3. So a combination is just a permutation where you've divided out the order. Now some easy things to think about. If you have 52 cards, and the order doesn't matter, and you choose all 52 of them, how many ways can that be done? Just one way. Because you get all 52 cards no matter what. And if you have 52 cards and you choose one of them, how many ways can that be done? 52 choose one or just 52 ways. 52 choose 51 is also going to be 52. Because every time I choose a group of one, I'm left with a group of 51. So that's this idea that when these two numbers add up to this number, then they're going to be the same. Because if I choose a group of six, I'm left with a group of four. Poker hands. Poker is a great example of where combinations, because you're dealt five cards, and the order doesn't matter. So this is just 52 choose 5. Whew. I once had this number memorized. 2, 5, oh, I think it ends with 980, 96. I see how close I am. I think that's a little bit off, but we'll. 52 choose 5, 2, 5, 9, 8, 9, 6, 0. Oh, dyslexic. 2598960. So close. So I'm going to show you something amazing. Shuffle these cards. I'm going to take out this card. Take out that card. Take out that one. That one. And that one. There's five cards. What do we have? The nine of clubs the eight of spades, the six of hearts, the eight of clubs, and the ace of clubs. Is this that? It doesn't feel that amazing. As far as poker goes, this is kind of like an okay hand, right? Two pairs. It's not really, not really that good. But the chances of me getting this were one in almost 2.6 million. You can go home and do this over and over again. You'll never see these five cards for a very long time again. This might be the only time in your entire life that on the first try, someone pulls out these five cards. Is that amazing? Eh, not really. Okay. The chances of me pulling these five cards were exactly the same, one in 2.6 million, as if I would have chosen ten of spades, jack of spades, queen of spades, king of spades, ace of spades. But that would have been more amazing, because in poker, that is extremely hard to get. 
a royal flush. But we're going to be able to figure out those things, like what are your chances of getting three of a kind? What are your chances of getting a full house, which is three of a kind and two of another kind? We're going to be able to figure out all of those things and figure out the chances. And if we figure out that, you can find out why some poker hands are worth more than others because your chances of getting them are less likely. Committee. Committee is a sort of a key word anytime they use committee or group to tell you that the order does not matter. So when you see they want to make a committee, they want to make a group, then the order does not matter. So if there's 15 boys, 18 girls, and they want two boys and three girls, well, how do you do this? You're going to multiply them together, because if you think of this as two main decisions, choosing your boys and choosing your girls as different decisions. So here's my boys. Here's my space for my girls. These aren't separate cases. They're separate decisions. 15 boys choose two. 18 girls choose three. And you have to multiply them together. The thing that people get mixed up on is thinking of these as a different case. And this is a different case, and then they try to add them together. If you're counting them as separate cases, then you're going to get, when you're done a case, you'll have a whole committee of five people. But when you do 15 choose two, you've only got two of the, three, of the five people for the committee, so it's not the entire thing. 85,680, excellent. A group of students must be separated into three smaller groups. Group A is going to have eight students, group B, five students, and group C, seven students. How many ways can this be done? So, how many students are there in total? There's 20 students. If you decide to make group A first, group A would be 20. choose 8. This is our group A. That's my first decision. My second decision, I'm going to then make group B. What is group B going to be? It's close. But if, eight, if group A has already been chosen, how many kids are left for group B? Only 12 are left. And I need to choose 5. And then group C, whoa, that's Group C will just be 7, choose 7. Because once you chose group A and group B, if the last kid's there, oh, I wonder what group I'm going to be in. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're going to be in group C because that's the only group that's left. So it makes sense that there's only one way at the end. So this is the one way to think about this. This is probably the most common way. What are you going to do with each of these? They're not separate cases. Because you've only done part of the problem by choosing group A, they're separate decisions, so you'll multiply them. The other way this question could be solved is if you lined up the students from shortest to tallest, and then got them to pick out of a hat the following letters. There would be eight A's in the hat, five B's in the hat, and seven C's in the hat. Then all the different orders of A's, B's, and C's would be all the different groups. And because they're identical, they wouldn't change the order of those groups. So this becomes like a Mississippi question. How would you do this Mississippi question? Well, there's 20 letters, so you'd have 20 factorial. 
over 8 factorial, 5 factorial, 7 factorial. Now, why are those two answers the same? Well, if we look at our combinations formula for what this means, 20 choose 8, and the combinations formula is very important that you're able to take it from this to the formula right away. And it's an easy one to do straight to the formula because you'll have 20 factorial on the top, you'll have 8 factorial on the bottom, and then what adds up to 20? 12. 12 choose 5 will be 12 on the top, 5 on the bottom, and what adds up? 7. And 7 choose 7 will be 7 on the top, 7 on the bottom, and what adds up? 0. So there's part of our formula. Remember, 0 factorial is equal to 1. Now, if you simplified this, can you see that this 12 would simplify with that 12? And these 7s would simplify, and the 0 is equal to 1, and we've got exactly that left. which again is a big number, you could type it into your calculator to find out. Okay, we'll go back to some card questions. If you wanted to find out how many poker hands had no clubs, what you could do is you could take your deck of cards and you could remove all the clubs. Then every time you dealt out five cards, you'd for sure get five cards without any clubs, right? So if you wanted to find out how many poker hands have no clubs, you take out the clubs, and then from the 39 that are left, choose five of them. Now, one of the hard things in combinations is sometimes your brain will come up with a strategy that appears to be right, but there might be a flaw in that strategy. So right now in part B, I'm going to become a salesman, and I'm going to try to sell you on different strategies. But I'm not going to tell you which ones are right, or which ones are wrong, or whether all of them are right or all of them are wrong. That's for you to decide. But I'm going to try and sell them to you like they're all right that they're all the right strategy, and you have to decide if all of them are right, all of them are wrong, or only one is right, or two is right. You have to figure that out, okay? We are going to find the number of poker hands with at least one club, okay? So, strategy number one. I want at least one club. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 13 clubs, take them out of the deck, and choose one of them. So 13 choose one guarantees that I have one club. I'm going to take the other 12 clubs, I'm going to put them back in the deck and shuffle it up. I now have how many cards left in the deck? 51. And if I want a poker hand with five cards, I'd have to take those 51 cards and choose four more of them, which means I could get more clubs or I could get no clubs, but I will guarantee that my hand has at least one club. Strategy number one. Strategy number two. I'd like to count this in different cases. First of all, for case one, I'm going to count how many poker hands have exactly one club. So I'm going to take the clubs out. I'm going to go 13. I'm going to choose one club. And then from the other 39 cards that are left, I'm going to choose four more. Then in case two, I'm going to count how many poker hands have two clubs. So I'll go 13. Choose 2 and multiply that by 39. Choose 3 because I'll choose 3 cards from the other 39. And I'll do this for every single case. So 3 clubs would be 13. Choose 3. And then I need to choose 2 other cards. Case 4 would be 13. Choose 4. 39. Choose 1 other card. And finally, case 5. 
I would just choose all five to be clubs. And then because I set it up as cases, I would add all of those up. And because I'm ha adding up exactly one club, exactly two clubs, exactly three clubs, exactly four clubs, and exactly five clubs, when I get my total, my total will be all the hands that have at least one club. Number three. Since I just counted in part A how many poker hands have no clubs, if I take all the poker hands that exist, 52 choose 5, and I subtract all of the poker hands with no clubs, 39 choose 5, which we figured out in part A, I'm going to be left with an answer that has all the ones that are left will have at least one club. So there are the three strategies. I hope I convinced you that they're all right. And now it's your decision to make if they're all right, all wrong, some of them are right, some of them are wrong. What do you think? Number one is wrong, number two is right, number three is right. Why is number one wrong? Here's an example of why number one is wrong. If you choose a club, say you choose the ace of clubs, and then in your other four cards you choose the five of hearts, the seven of clubs, the three of diamonds, and the ace of diamonds. Another time counting here, you could have started by saying 13 choose 1. You could have got the 7 of clubs first. And then when you picked from the other cards, you could have got the 5 of hearts again. The ace of clubs, the 3 of diamonds, and the ace of diamonds. And in this technique, these would have been counted as different. Are they different poker hands? No. no. So we have to be careful that there's no overlap when we separate things. When I did the cases, this is always clubs, this is always not clubs, so there's no overlap there. And these are okay to count that way. But because there could, I could pick the ace of clubs here or the ace of clubs in there, I'm counting this example twice. In fact, when you calculated this, did anybody calculate this? Yeah. It's like three million something? Yeah. How many poker hands are there in total? Two. There's 2.6 million. And that one is over three million with at least one club? It should be less than the, than the total number of poker hands. This number three is probably the best strategy. Can I get one of those extra Yes.